shines outside our window. And the birds are chirping all around in this happy little rural southern town in North Carolina. Hello and welcome to Rusty Water Towers, the podcast in search of faith and hope in rural life and ministry. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan LeMastersmith, or as folks often call me, Dr. J. Each episode of the podcast, I talk with a guest about their experience in rural life and ministry as we search stories, examples, and images of creative faith and hope that I believe are latent in our rural communities. My guest today is a returning guest, the Reverend Shannon LeMastersmith, the brand new children and youth ministry strategist for the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church, a certified ministry coach, and she's also my wife. But today, she's here as a songwriter and musician. As you know, she wrote and performed our theme song, Hildebrand. She writes songs about faith and hope and place. Now, usually we start each week off with a country music recommendation about rural life and faith. But since Shannon's here, I'm going to ask her to share a song with us. And I believe you know this one. Thank you. Thank you. So now we've heard about this song some on a previous episode, but I want you to say more about claiming this little rural southern town as your own. Sure. So um, growing up in Morganton, um, Hildebrand was just this place that we passed through on our way to somewhere else. Um, I never thought that I would live there. Uh, so when we just happened to find this cute little house in Hildebrand, um, one of the first kind of realizations I had was, oh, this was just a town that people passed through to get to somewhere else. Um, but, but then there were other things that just became 
a part of this uh, thing that we call home. It was the light that shines really bright through our window. It was living across uh, the railroad tracks. Um, it was living next to the fire station. And all of these things that I think other people probably would quickly dismiss as somewhat undesirable um, just became part of what we call home. And so as I was um, inspired by seeing these things and noticing these things, it just kind of made its way into a song. Great. Uh, as you think about that song, what inspires you to claim place as part of your songwriting process? I think place is what grounds us. Place is what grounds us. Um, and as we think of home as a place where we can come and let go and just be, um, place is that that sense of I'm home. Like anytime we would go on a long road trip, whenever we hit I-40, it felt like I'm home, even though we might have been really far down on I-40. Um, coming to I-40, especially in the mountains through Tennessee or North Carolina, felt like home. And so as I crossed that bridge across the railroad tracks and I passed the fire station, that feels like home, that place that used to be somewhat foreign, some a place that most people just pass through is someone's home. And it's opened my eyes to any any time I'm passing through, especially rural area, I notice things. I want to notice things that otherwise I would have I used to just pass by. Um, now I kind of romanticize as as something that I want to notice, something I want to look for, because those things are important for for many people to claim as that's what's home to them. And so the dogs that bark at each other, again, somebody passing by or somebody new to the place might think of that as annoying, but to me it's home because the dogs are talking to each other. Um, the birds are always chirping, and um, I just find that to be beautiful because it feels like home. Are there any parts of living in rural small town life you don't enjoy? That's a, that's a hard one. I mean, when the cars drive by our house really fast, um, uh, again, without regard to, hey, there are people living here or there might be children playing in the yard or a dog, a random neighbor's dog might be in the road. And so when people just kind of fly by mm -hmm. our house as if it's not there or if they're driving on a highway, um, it feels kind of disrespectful to me and yeah. frustrating and dangerous. And so I don't appreciate because, that. Because again, it's just they're passing through Hildebrand. They're not there to experience the joy of living or staying in Hildebrand. Yeah, that that feels annoying. That that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it seems to be that reminder that as we experience new places, we know that this is home to someone. This is where someone puts their life and their experience. And before we pass any sort of judgment, whether it's Hildebrand or anywhere else in the world, we have to know that people live here and call it home and love this place. Yeah. As part of it. So what we're going to do is take a short break, and then we'll come back and talk about your songwriting process and maybe hear another song All right. as part of that. So we'll be back after these messages. Hi there, Jonathan here, and I'm recording this ad to tell you about a resource from the Hinton Rural Life Center. My wife Shannon and I have partnered with Hinton to create the Theotokos Connections Confirmation Curriculum for small rural churches. We designed this curriculum with rural youth programs in mind, where you really want to connect their teenagers with the culture, heritage, and place on top of the faith you're trying to instill through the confirmation program. There are six sessions that focus on topics like connecting to self, God, history, church, place, and creation. Each unit has either a Bible story, like the story of Mary or the story of Samuel, or a historical figure like Richard Allen or Harriet Tubman, to engage with as part of the experience. But this experience is not just a sit and listen and do a paperwork kind of confirmation. It's an active and connective confirmation program. You might be headed to a museum, helping prepare for a church spaghetti supper, learning new prayer practices, assisting in worship, or volunteering at the local mission agency. It is designed with rural culture and rural life in mind. You can do this in six weeks, six months, 
and you can do them in most any order or form you want to engage. And I'll tell you, I, I'm pretty sure it's not just youth programs using this curriculum. I've seen other people get it for their college ministries, as well as perhaps using it as adult confirmation or adult refresher on Methodist and rural culture and life. And you know, if you have other trusted confirmation curriculum you want to pair it with, go ahead. This is a very customizable program, so if you want to bring other lessons from a different program you've used or things you've written yourself, feel free to blend them in. This is also a very affordable program and you pay per student, not for a lump sum curriculum that you may not use all the pieces of or you may not use but once every two or three years. And this is designed to make it affordable and accessible for you. And it pairs well with Hinton's Theotokos confirmation retreats that happen in the spring. For more information on the curriculum or to place an order, check out hintoncenter.org slash theotokos or hintontheotokos.org for more information. Thanks. So welcome back, everyone. Shannon, we know you've written more songs than Hildebrand, and I want you to share a little bit about your songwriting process. Sure. So I started writing music when I was in seventh grade, um, but it was mostly on the piano at that time. Um, at the same time, I'd be writing poems and stuff like that that had kind of helped me process adolescent life. But I really didn't pick up writing music with lyrics um, until college and um, even more so once COVID hit, I found myself writing more music. Um, I kept getting frustrated that there wasn't worship music that really highlighted, I think, some things that I believed about God and how God works and the human condition. And so again, kind of writing music as a way to process my beliefs and as a way of processing life. And so uh, what got me jump started back was that the pastor I worked with was doing a sermon series on the prophets and people in the Old Testament who had these big encounters with God. And I was thinking of the, the story of Elijah for one week and the, the story of Elijah as he's waiting for, for God to appear. It's in the still small voice that God appears. And so I'm just writing down the interstate in my car and these lyrics come to me in the form of a song. Um, and so I just started singing the, the, what, I was, what I was experiencing and hearing, and it turned into a song. And so then the next week was about Esther, and I found myself singing a song about Esther. And both of these I shared in worship, and people seemed to really respond well to them. And so it inspired me to keep going. So a lot of my inspiration comes from scripture, um, from processing theologies and belief systems, but a lot of it also comes from nature and just experiencing God in nature and nature as a sense of grounding um, when all of the world seems so chaotic and frustrating. Um, to just be still and appreciate the sunrise is very cathartic and grounding for me. Mm. So you talked about uh, songwriting as helping you processing life. I don't know if we mentioned this before, but... Oftentimes, there's a song of the day in our house that someone just has in their mind when they mm -hmm. wake up, and that sort of becomes our theme song for the day. So it seems like you're someone, and we're people who just music sinks, sits with us and helps us just get through our lives. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be without music, and it, it got me through the hardest times of my life um, as an adolescent, um, just struggling with who I was. I found a lot of my identity in singing and being part of choirs um, and then in, in accompanying choirs in college and forming a praise team, playing the piano is my first job. So music is a, is a huge part of who I am. That's a huge part of my identity um, and a way that I get to connect with other people and with God. Thank you. Thank you. And I think you've got another song to share with us. Sure. So I, I'm going to share the song that I wrote about Esther. Again, the, the story of Esther goes is that she's in a, a really difficult position and her uncle suggests that perhaps you're in the, uh, that for such a time as this, you are in this position and God will use you for good. Um, and so the story is a little bit about Esther and a little bit about us.
such a time as this You made me, you placed me Such a time as this, you made me, you placed me here. For such a time as this, you gave me strength and courage to be who you made me to be. I need your strength. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. As we think about that song and rural life, what do you think that says to people who live in rural communities? I think a lot of it, uh, this song is about how we may not have control over whatever situation we're in or the whatever struggles we're going through in life. This song reignites a sense of courage to continue on, to press on, and to know that wherever you are and however we are, that God can use us for good. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, that sense of courage and strength that God gives us to get through the hardest times for whatever brought us there, we're there, um, but God can help us through it. Thank you. Thank you. What do you hope your music overall says to people in general? I hope it gives people hope. Um, <laughs> I... I I know it's funny. I hope that it gives words to things that people may not have have thought of that could be in a song before. I hope it's accessible. Um, that music doesn't have to be complicated. One of the latest songs I wrote is just a simple um, chorus of, of how God calls us to come and lay our burdens down. It doesn't have to be a really long and drawn out. So I hope that it gives I hope that it gives people hope and strength. And just kind of a, a sense of peace as they go through the struggles of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the the chorus that I wrote. I haven't really finished the song yet, but so we're getting some early early, <laughs> early drafts yeah, of some music. Yeah, it's just um, it's scripture in the form of a song, and it's God saying, "Come to me, all who are weary. Come lay your burdens down." but it's, it draws you in to this deeper experience of, of God that I hope restores people's hope and, and renews their spirits. And do you hope people are able to use this music in worship spaces or other sort of places? Yeah, I do hope so. Um, there's something called the Convergence Music Project, and I want to put my music on that. Unfortunately, you have to have it all written out in sheet music, and I haven't quite got there yet. But that is a great source for people to turn to for a more accessible worship music. But I do hope this music can be something that people can, can mm -hmm. use to connect with God, whether that's worshiping on their own or in a corporate setting. Well, that's my hope uh, with your music. I hope that people have responded about our theme song several times, saying it means something to them. It helps them know that their place is something that music can be written about. Yes. And that their faith now, what we learn from your music, is something that can be written about and sung about. And my hope is that you do get your music out there, whether it's through recording it or sheet music or both or performing it wherever. So... Again, Jen, I'd like to thank you for being here and helping us start out what's 
likely going to be our season two opener. Yes. For a season two of Rusty I'm Water so Towers. I'm so excited for this season to come out. Yes, yes. She's at, she was one of the people that had stayed on me to get back to recording episodes of the podcast. And at time of this recording, I have about eight scheduled plus a couple episodes I just never processed from last season. Nice. To come into that. And we may have some classic episodes come back as some fillers. Uh, as part of that, to get people who hadn't listened to our podcast before. So, Shannon, thank you for being here, and you probably will be back again in the future. Anytime. Uh, anytime as part of this. Uh, so first, I want you to tell our listeners where they can find you on social media, email, websites, anything like that. Yeah, I'm on uh, Facebook and Instagram and now Threads, and <laughs> you can find me at DeaconShannon.org. The DeaconShannon.org. We'll put that information in our bio. Anywhere they can listen to your music yet? Uh, there is one song on DeaconShannon.org if you look at the tab, Music. And uh, uh, we're hoping to get some songs on Spotify within the next few months. Um, so we'll see about that. What what she's not saying is I'm also sort of her tech guy to get, mu <laughs> yeah, to get music out places. So we're working on that as well as maybe some uh, some social media postings of her singing her songs where you can watch videos or hear more audio of it as part of that. And she la we laughed about being on threads is because I told her to get on threads and she doesn't want to be necessarily on threads, but I'm telling you it's getting better. I really like being on threads. Again, thank you so much for being here, Shannon. I'm going to close this out. You can listen to Rusty Water Towers wherever you get your podcasts. If you have questions, suggestions for guests or topics, or just want to say hi, you can reach out to us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now threads. Or you can email us at rustywatertowers at gmail.com. Again, special thanks to Shannon Mastersmith for our theme music. And I record this podcast because my hope is that it lifts up the hope and faith of rural life and ministry. I'm going to ask Shannon to play us out.